Okay, welcome to Let's Get to the Marks. We're looking at uh, Physics and Maths Tutor, uh, which is a brilliant website for your A-level revision. If I go down here to AQA 2016 to 2021 papers and we click on alcohols, I'm going to work through some organic questions on alcohols. So let's go. Question one, which statement is not correct about the industrial production of ethanol from ethene at 300 degrees? Uh, is the reaction catalyzed by an acid? Well, so we're looking at the one that's not correct. Yeah, the, re the reaction is catalyzed by an acid. It's catalyzed by phosphoric acid. So that can't be the right answer because that's a true statement. So we're really looking for the false statement. Now, the second question, B, says, uh, or answer, sorry, says the reaction has a 100% atom economy. Well, we can see there's two reactants and only one product. If you only have one product, it must be 100% atom economy, as it's the MR of useful products over the total products. So there we go. And the third one, if you increase the temperature, um, it decreases the equilibrium yield of ethanol. Well, this is an exothermic reaction. We can tell by the minus sign with the delta H. And if you increase the temperature of exothermic reactions, they shift to the reactant or the left side. So they do decrease the yield. So that's another true statement, which leaves our answer as the final one. And it says an increase in pressure increases the value of Kc. Well, changing the pressure, pressure or the concentrations of reactants do not change the value of Kc. It's only temperature that affects Kc. So the correct answer for this one is D. Now, you guys, you can check out the description. I'll have a link for these questions in there. Right, this is question two. So a student plans an experiment to investigate the yield of propanoic acid when a sample of propan 1 ol is oxidized. The figure below shows the apparatus the student plans to use for the experiment. The student's teacher says the apparatus is not safe. Give two reasons why the apparatus shown above is not safe. It's not above, it's on the left here. I've squeezed it all onto one page. So the first thing, they've left a bung in the top. Now, when you're doing reflex, your heat, reflux, reflex, when you're refluxing, you are heating vigorously so that you ensure all of the reactant gets to the final stage. We want carboxylic acid and no aldehydes formed here. So we've got a big problem with a bung in there, you're going to get pressure build up with the expansion of gases and you could get an explosion or the lid could pop off. So don't put a bung in the end, have an open end. The other, the other problem here that I've identified is a clamp. The clamp is on the wrong place. The clamp should be at the round bottom flask, otherwise the bottom will fall off and it will smash. Okay, what's the next question? Give one additional reagent that is needed to form any propanoic acid. Well, in order to form propanoic acid, we need an oxidizing agent, which is the potassium dichromate. Um, and we're going to need phosphoric or sulfuric acid as a catalyst. State two more mistakes in the way the apparatus is set up in the above figure. So two more mistakes that the apparatus is set up here. So the first one I'm highlighting here, the cold water should come in at the bottom with reflux and um, so yeah it should come in at the bottom and out at the top the reason is you want the cold water coming in at the bottom close to the heat source because the idea with reflux we want to take that energy out we want to condense it before it um, gets to the top so that it comes back down so basically you have the cold water going in at the bottom and once it's warmed up that comes out at the top there's a bigger temperature difference between the vapor and the cold water so you're going to condense it more easily like this okay and the second mistake when doing reflux we don't need the thermometer okay you need a thermometer for fractional distillation where you're holding something at a particular temperature just um, below the boiling point of something else or exactly on the boiling point you don't need a thermometer for reflux where you're just aiming to vigorously heat the contents um, you just want to evaporate all the contents and you're not interested in holding it at any particular temperature. Uh, state the purpose of the small glass beads. Well, the small glass beads at the bottom there, they are anti-bumping granules and they prevent bumping, which is the formation of large bubbles that are going to rattle around your round bottom flask and maybe cause some issues and some danger issues and safety issues as well as rattling around the equipment. They break the big gas bubbles into small bubbles and those are anti-bumping granules. Now we're on to part, um, the next part. 
and it says calculate the percentage yield of propanoic acid and the particular technique used. Now, if we go through and we look at the specifics here, after correcting the mistakes, the student heats a reaction mixture containing 6.50 grams of propan 1 ol with an excess of oxidizing agent. The propanoic acid is separated from the reaction mixture. It has a mass of 3.25 grams. State the technique used to separate the propanoic acid from the re reaction mixture. So we can use distillation or fractional distillation. Um, and then it asks us to calculate the percentage yield. Well, the first thing to do is work out the MR of propanol because we've been told how much propanol we started with, which was 6.5 grams. If we can work out the, ma um, the moles of propanol we started with, we can work out the moles of propanoic acid and the mass of propanoic acid that we should get, the maximum mass or theoretical mass. We can then do the yield equation with our actual mass of 3.25 grams. So um, we can work out here by dividing mass by MR. We have 0 0.108 moles of propanol. Uh, in a one-to-one -one reaction with propanoic acid, we get 0 0.108 moles of propanoic acid. Now, if we work out the MR of propanoic acid, which is 74, we multiply the moles by the MR, and we're going to get the mass that we should achieve, the theoretical mass of propanoic acid. So if you have 6.5 grams of propanol, you should get 8.016 grams of propanoic acid. What did we actually get? Well, we actually got 3.25 grams. So what's our yield? Well, we're going to do 3.25 divided by the theoretical amount we should have got, which is 8.01, times 100, and you're going to get 40.5%. Not a very good yield at all. Okay, let's move on. So the final part of this question two is state a simple chemical test that distinguishes the propanoic acid from the propan 1 ol Give one observation with the test and the result for each substance. So the test we're going to do is add a carbonate. If you add a carbonate to any acid, it's going to bubble as it releases carbon dioxide gas. It's a neutralization reaction, but it releases CO2, which can turn lime water cloudy. Or you can just say you'll see bubbles with the acid. You won't see any bubbles formed with the alcohol. And that will get you three marks. Let's go. All right, question three, it's a multiple choice question. Zooming in here, which compound is produced when one phenethanol reacts with acidified potassium dichromate six? Uh, phenol is a benzene ring that's a side chain. Okay, so it's just a side group in the molecule. And the one tells us which carbon it comes off of. So we write our ethanol out. And there's two options here for ethanol. Okay, so our OH group can either be on the first carbon or the second carbon, or it can come off of this other carbon. So with ethanol, there's two carbons. So the OH could be um, at the end or off of the middle carbon. Which one is it? Well, this tells us it's one phenyl. So it can't be the top one. One phenyl would mean that one, you number the carbons in the alcohol where one is the carbon with the hydroxide group, the OH group attached. So what type of alcohol is that? When we look at that, what I've drawn there, one phenethanol, you can see that the carbon with the OH group has two carbons attached and one hydrogen. This makes it a secondary alcohol. Secondary alcohols have two carbon atoms attached to the carbon which has the hydroxide group on it. Okay, and secondary alcohols can only form ketones when they're oxidized. Okay. Uh, potassium dichromate is an oxidizing agent, so we just have to go through and identify the ketone. So A is an alcohol, B is an aldehyde, the CHO groups at the end, and C, you can see the CO, the carbonyl group, is in the middle, so it's a ketone. And the, the last one, D, is an alcohol too. Okay, so the answer has to be C. Let's go, question four. Which statement is correct about the production and use of ethanol as a biofuel? Again, we're looking for a true statement. It says correct. Biofuel ethanol is produced by fermentation of glucose in the presence of air. Well, that's not true. It's an anaerobic process. By the way, remember to pause the videos in these when you have a go at these questions. Um, B, is that true? Biofuel ethanol is purified by fractional distillation. Well, we do know that ethanol needs to be purified when you ferment it. It's got bits of yeast hanging around in there. It produces carbon dioxide gas. There's all sorts of other things, sugars and things that could be in there. So C, no carbon dioxide is released when biofuel 
ethanol is burned. Well, that's not true. Whenever you combust an organic chemical, you're going to release carbon dioxide. If you burn carbon atoms in oxygen, you're getting carbon dioxide. And the biofuel burns with a clean flame. Well, alcohol burns with the same flame. I mean, yeah. And the ethene, the alcohol produced from the hydration of ethene is very pure. So it's unlikely to be true. All right, here we go. We have question five. Propanol can be prepared by the oxidation of propan one ol with acidified potassium dichromate. We've got the ionic equation for this, which shows three propanol reacting with some dichromate ions to form propanol. Calculate the minimum volume in centimeter cubed of 0.4 mole per decimeter potassium dichromate. That's the concentration we've got there. Uh, six solution. Needed to oxidize six centimeter cubed of propan one ol to propanol. So let's look at the details. They've given us the MR of propan 1 ol. We've got the density of propan 1 ol. So we're going to have to use mass over MR equals moles. We've been given the volume of propan 1 ol. Now, if we do density is equal to mass divided by volume, we can do the density times the volume to get the mass. So we can do the density is 0.8. We can multiply this by the volume, which is 6 centimetre cube. 0.8 times 6, whack that in your calculator, and we'll get the actual mass, which is 4.8 grams. Okay. Oh, my density should be grams per centimetre to the minus 3, cube to the minus 3. So we've got 4.8 grams mass. Now what do we do? Well, we can find out the moles of propan 1. So 4.8 divided by the MR, which is 60, gives us our moles of propan 1 ol. And we've got 0.08 N, which is 0.08 moles of propanol. Now let's look at the ratio of the propanol reacting with the dichromate ions. Why are we doing that? Because dichromate is the thing we've been given the information for, and we need to find out how much dichromate is needed. So we've got a 3 to 1 ratio. So I need to divide 0.08 by 3 to find the moles of dichromate that we need. So we divide that by 3, 0.0266 moles of potassium dichromate is what we have. Now, how can we turn this into mass? You could go and start trying to work out the MR or the potassium dichromate and things like that. But that's not what they want you to do. They've given us the concentration here. So remember this triangle, moles is concentration times volume. So all we need to do here is take our moles, 0.0266 moles of potassium dichromate, and divide it by the concentration, which they told us was 0.4 mole per decimeter. And we are going to get the volume of potassium, hydro potassium dichromate solution that we need. And the volume is um, 0.066 decimeters. We now need to convert that into centimeters. So times it by 100. And you're going to get 66. 0.6 centimeter cubed. There we go. That's the volume of potassium dichromate needed. Why did we get 0.06 decimeters and not centimeters? Well, the concentration is in moles per decimeter. So your answer when you divide moles by concentration was always going to be in decimeters. You needed to convert back to centimeters because that's the volume they wanted. Okay. Awesome. Well done. Let's remember to pause the video and have a go at these. Uh, so this question is saying, complete the diagram to show the assembled apparatus needed to prepare propan al from propan 1 ol in this way. Essentially, we've got a pear-shaped flask in the diagram, and you just need to add the, the tube coming off the side, turn it into a Liebig condenser by adding another tube around the outside, show the water in, show the water out. Now, the cold water in comes in furthest away from the heat source, and the warm water out comes in closer here. Um, the cold water in comes in lower down. And you also need a slope. Make sure that you draw the side glass tube diagonally going down. And that's what you need for distillation. Um, you will also need for distillation a thermometer. So you can hold it at a specific boiling point. Um, and you will also need a clamp. Okay, so that the equipment doesn't fall over. And you've got your heat source underneath the pear-shaped flask directly going up. Make sure you don't you draw a clear side tube with nothing in the way and make sure you show the condenser is separate from the tube. The cold water going into the Liebig condenser doesn't mix 
with the um, condensation happening inside the tube. The chemicals in the tube do not mix with the water. They are separate entities. And of course, you need a bung to stop anything escaping and you need a thermometer. And that's it. So what are your three marks for? Well, drawing the condenser is definitely going to get you a mark. Drawing a slope on the condenser uh, is going to get you a mark. Putting the water in and water out in the correct way when you're doing distillation, which is opposite to where the water goes in and out in reflux. It's kind of in a different position, so that's key. Um, those are all things that are important. Also, you need the tube sealed. The equipment needs to be completely sealed so nothing can come out. Other than you must have an open end on the glass tube where your condensation is happening and where you're taking off your product. Okay, question six, which compound can be oxidized to form CH3 to CHCO CH3? Well, we can see if we write this out with the display formula, we can see this is a ketone, right? So uh, what did this ketone come from? Well, it came from a secondary alcohol. See my little crusty diagram here? So which one of these is a secondary alcohol? Spot the secondary alcohol. Well, the first one, propan-1-ol for A, is not a secondary. It's a primary alcohol because the OH group is right on one end. 2,2-dimethylpropanol, well, that's not going to be a secondary alcohol either. Um, that's going to probably be uh, primary as well. And then we've got 2 methyl butan 2 o If we draw this out here in red here, we can see my CH3 group is there, my OH group is there. Look. There's three carbons attached to the carbon with the OH. No hydrogen atoms in sight attached to the carbon with the OH. This is definitely a tertiary and will not be oxidized at all, let alone to a ketone. So it has to be this third one. And if we draw this out, 3 meter butan 2 ol you're actually going to see this is the correct answer. See, we've got the OH coming off here and the CH3 coming off another one. And so that means there's one hydrogen coming off the carbon with the OH group or two carbons coming off. So it's a secondary alcohol. So that's the one that will become a ketone. Awesome. All right, guys, we're going to finish there because this question is a repeat of an earlier question that we did, this question seven. So we already know that one with the one phenyl ethanol. So uh, we're going to finish up. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments or any recommendations for videos. A popular one at the moment is NMR, so I'll be getting into some videos on that soon. All right, guys, take care. And don't forget, let's get to the marks. You're still here? It's over.